I'm calling from the trip. I'd like to confirm a call. Get to her around two hours. I'll be coming up on deadline. How much money was involved? Was it over a thousand dollars? Was it over ten thousand no. I'm a reporter with the Los Angeles Tribune. Very clever. Who? I want to ask you to check the mic as a favor. This is not an audition, you know. Well, you said to say anything. Try testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Hey, she's too high. You're not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, gentlemen, ladies. I'm Curtis Folger, Vice President of Communications for Anacott Industries. Now, behind me, you see uh, our future home. Now, the plan is to move Anacott operations from Detroit to L.A. by the spring of next year. And manufacturing will start about six months later. Now, let me give you a couple of statistics that I think are important. We anticipate a workforce of 2,500, accounting for a payroll of $50 million per year. Now, a lot of the credit, I think, for our move should go to Councilman Naughton here. He's, um, well, he's a very persuasive man. Now, are there any questions? Uh, Mr. Folder? Yes, the lady who was too hot before. <laughs> Billy Newman of the Tribune. Won't there be a danger of added pollution to the L.A. Basin with this new plant? No, but it's good you asked. I can assure you that Anacott is planning the most modern, an environmentally fail-safe facility in the U.S. Mr. Folger, will uh, Anacon transfer many workers? Yeah, about 25%. The rest will hire locally. Now, for my part, I've been searching for a new home here in L.A., and I expect to never have to buckle on another galosh. <laughs> Ever. Yes, we'll be relying heavily on the local labor force, and we expect to launch an affirmative action training program within a year. Mr. Folger... Concerning the pollution issue, how does the Environmental Protection Agency feel about this relocation and the Air Resources Board? As you may have heard, we have a smog problem here. Yes, I did hear a rumor to that effect. <laughs> Actually, our standards are far more stringent than anything the EPA has come up with. Now, I'll be, I'll be um, very happy to fill you in on the finer details, Billy, whenever it's convenient. Would you two like to be alone? <laughs> now, Anacott has always been a leader in environmental safety and concern. Now remember, we're planning to be a part of this community and to live here. We're not making this move just so we can poison ourselves. Where's Adam? Mexico City. Again? Still, the Minister of Natural Resources keeps putting him off, but he's hoping for an interview tomorrow. This story's gonna wind up costing us 10 bucks a word. How do you figure? Haven't you ever seen one of Adam Wilson's expense accounts? They're better than his stories. And longer. Mm. What else we got? Mm. Billy's story on that new factory. We should have that pretty soon. Soon? She should have it in now. Billy! I need more time, Lou. Take all the time you want. Take four, five minutes. Can I have 15? No problem. We'll just run a headline saying, watch this space. Why do you need more time? It's just a simple, straightforward little story about a new company moving in, so? So, there are a lot of discrepancies. 
Like? Like the guy at the press conference was lying. He said that Anacott always satisfied EPA regulations. I made one routine phone call back east and found out that they were cited 117 times in three years for pollution from their Michigan plant. But don't they have the okay to build here? No, the government's not at all sure they'll grant permission for the L.A. operation. Here you go, Lou. Made one for you too, Billy, for your scrapbook. So this is a guy, huh? He's pretty sharp. Billy's got good taste. Hmm. A little something brewing here, huh? She's just setting him up like she did that crooked state assembly man. Poor guy. Has he asked you out yet? We're wasting precious time here. Okay, you got 15 minutes, no more. Thanks, Lou. Damn the trip. Must have been a really slow news day. <clears throat> Thank you. More Sierra Club? Oh, Sierra Club, Friends of the Earth, Clean Air League, you name it. They ran that story from the trip over the wire, too. Half the papers in California picked it up. I think it was a crime to bring 2,500 jobs to the city and $50 million a year. Well, some are supportive. Here's one from the Chamber of Commerce. Another from a craft union. Unfortunately, that looks like the extent of our support. Hmm. Okay. Let's go. Lions are restless. Well, as you can see, we've been deluged with messages of concern about the Anacott move to Los Angeles. We've not completed the tabulation, but we expect it will strongly favor Anacott. Who did that? Somebody for cleaner air. Yeah. You team is Thank you. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. No, that'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can count on it. Okay. Goodbye. This is a cheap shot. Now, wait. You said that Anacott was going to build a safe facility in Los Angeles. It was a very cheap shot. Unless it's customary in Los Angeles to print allegations without checking out facts. Just a minute. I called the EPA. They said that the liquid chemical... Every Detroit... one of those 117 infractions that you cited were minor in nature. Look, you've got to understand that it's difficult to convert a 20-year-old plant to conform to brand new regulations. Here in Los Angeles, we could have started from scratch. This could have been the best plant in the nation. Could have been. That's right, Billy. We wanted to build a new facility, not a controversy. What exactly are you saying? What I'm saying is that even Anacott isn't big enough to stand up to the press and all the people that the press has stirred up. People out there are throwing smoke bombs. The Home Office has called the project off. Off? What do you mean? Off. Fini. We'll find some places we're wanted. Isn't that going just a little too far? Yeah. The funny thing is, I finally found that home I wanted to buy. Congratulations. You won. Los Angeles is saved from the vipers of industry. All right, now, what about this Anacott story? To me, that looks like our lead. I think we've pushed that too far already. It's because of the trip that there's a story there at all. It sounds like an argument for running with it. That's enterprise. I was bringing in a $50 million payroll. But losing that is really going to hurt this area. Since when is it our purpose to scare away new business, new jobs? Since when is it our purpose to serve as boosters for new business? We've done it plenty of times. Well, don't hold your breath waiting for a plaque from the mayor for costing the city a million dollars in tax revenue. I didn't realize I was expected to win plaques from the mayor. Doesn't it seem to you that Billy's got an axe to grind? It does not. Well, the way I heard it, there was something personal with her and that hot shot from Anacott. That's out of line. Fellas. Let's not get into personalities. All that we should be judging here is what was printed. And what was printed was solid as a rock. Newman. Am 
many I rate phone calls is that? I don't know. Who counts? Fifteen since I got here. Must be three times that. Forty-five. That's pretty good. Of course, I got 212 one time. Well, I guess I'm not in your class. Billy Newman. A message. Okay, just a sec. A dozen eggs. Two gallons milk. A head of lettuce. What is this? I see. Her husband quit his job to go to work for Anacott. Because of me, he's out of work, so she was reading me her family's shopping list. Well, you'll get used to it. Don't let it get to you, kid. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on A&E. Do you have anything for us? Yes, yes, I will. Um, I'll, I'll be rolling. I'm ready. Hey. There's nothing firm to report yet, but there has been progress in our meeting with Annika, and uh, we're trying to get them to rethink their move away from Los Angeles. Have the environmental agencies been in on these talks? No, they haven't, but they have agreed to meet with the Annika engineers, and the EPA may reconsider their position on the permits. Now, this council is committed to continue in closed-door executive session to resolve the remaining differences, no matter how long it takes. Thank you. It's exciting to be a photographer on a big city daily. Hardest part is learning to pace yourself on a story. You don't want to peak too soon and let all that adrenaline go to waste. This is going all night. No, I think we should hear something any minute now. First room. Yeah, I understand. Gotcha. We're ready. Did you do that? Practice. Lots of practice. Well, I think it's fair to say that um, there's been a lot of give and take on both sides. And uh, the upshot is that after extensive negotiations, Anacott has decided to go on with its original plan and locate here in Los Angeles. Now, <coughs> discussions with the Mexican government concerning Mexico as a possible alternative will cease immediately. And although we appreciate the hospitable offer from our good neighbor to the south, we feel it best that Anacott locate here. What do these talks really mean, Mr. Folger? Well, for one thing, it means I can buy that new house I like after all. <laughs> Unless, of course, the price has gone up too much. <laughs> Mr. Folger. Will Anacott satisfy the requirements of the Air Resources Board and the EPA, or have there been major concessions? No, all the necessary standards will be met. And if you wish, you can uh, check with our engineering department in the interest of accuracy. Thank you. How are we doing on time? We'll just make the 6 o'clock report. That's how you knew, isn't it? Nah, just a lucky guess. Uh, Councilman Naughton, uh, I'm curious about your meeting with Anacott. What about it? Well, it all happened so fast. One day they say they're leaving, the next they're staying. There's no pleasing you guys, is there? I bet if this thing took more time, you'd write a story about how we dragged our feet. We can't win. What's wrong? This dog was fine. Yeah, just terrific. Well, at least he got you off the hook. Let her go at that. Lou, isn't there something about this whole Anacott deal that just doesn't track the way it's on again, off again? But does that happen a lot with business deals? Well, yeah, but there's something about this case that's just too neat the way it all happened so fast. Okay. Let's think about that for a second. What did they have to gain by making it tough on themselves? Well, a whole shopping list of concessions from the looks of it. You know, I had this nice, clear, uncomplicated story about a medical clinic opening up on the east side. I guess I'm not going to be able to lay it off on you. Huh? I can do both. 
Two bowls. That crew out there really knows what they're doing. Some of those guys can handle a cat like it's a sport car. You know, they're not much to look at, but when you need a mountain moved, they start to look awful pretty. Oh, my name is uh, Shirley, Shirley Hagen. Billy, Billy Newman. Oh, <laughs> sounds like we should have had each other's name. <laughs> you guys sure managed to get back to work in a hurry. Back to work? It's only since yesterday that the company announced that they're going to stay in L.A. I don't know anything about that. We've been on the job steady since the beginning. Why, some of the men are pulling down 20, 25 hours a week overtime. We don't even shut down Sundays. My name is Billy Newman. I'm here to see Curtis Folger. What does he know what it's about? He should. I'm from the Tribune. Never challenge reporters, Cindy. Don't think we have something to hide. Please, come in. Forgive us. New secretary. What happened to Nell? Well, we had a difference of opinion about whether her job included making coffee. I had to let her go. Still make me a terrible guy. Was it part of the job description? Of course. So, what can I do for you, Billy? I was at your construction site today. I find it difficult to understand why the work didn't stop when Annika decided to move to Mexico. I'm not sure I see what you're driving at. Is it possible that the threat to move to Mexico was meaningless? A smokescreen? Uh, what gives you that idea? A construction crew that never stopped working even after the company pulled out. I think Anacott always knew it was going to settle in L.A. Well, I think you've written a beautiful scenario. But the trouble is it's 100% fiction. See, the truth is, we had a lot of money committed to that building site. And to try and sell it in its half-improved state would have cost us money. So, um, since the grading was well underway, we chose to continue on with the improvements, reasoning that it would be easier to sell. You're trying to poke a hole in my explanation. If you need more time to think about it, we can have dinner tonight. I'll take you up on the thinking about it, but I'll pass on the dinner. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. I'm sorry, but it's against company policy to give out the home address or phone number of employees. Look. I can't. She's a friend of mine. Why don't you have her number? We met at work. We just go to lunch together. Should have gotten the number. <laughs> Next time I'll remember. I wish I could help. Okay. Let's try it this way. Why can't you give me the number and address? Company policy. No personal information on employees. She's not an employee. She used to work here, and now she doesn't. She got canned. You sure of the spelling? No, not really. I'll see what I can find, but I'm new here myself. Yes, we have it, but I can't give that information out. Take it. I can't help it if you take it. Okay? Okay. Could you move your hand? Miss Newman, isn't it? Billy, yes. Come on in. 
Uh, sorry to hear about your job. Thanks. Why don't we sit down? I'm going to kick my shoes off. I've been pounding the pavement all day looking for work. I know what that's like. Oh. Well, what can I do for you, Billy? As you know, I've been covering Anacott's move to L.A. In and out and in again. Look, I was let go, and I don't mind saying I'm sorry about that. But Anacott's a good company. And if you're here to hear bad things about Anacott, you've come to the wrong place. If you feel that way about it, why did you quit over the issue of making coffee? I worked for Anacott for seven years, and I didn't care if I had to make coffee, as long as I had other stuff to do. In fact, I was starting to have some real responsibility, a chance at a real career. And then I was asked to work for Curtis Bolger. What went wrong? Well, it may be hard to believe in this day and age that he expected a secretary to be someone you could make all kinds of demands on. I wouldn't go out with him, and I wouldn't go out with his clients. Not very classy, is it, for a company like Anacott? Didn't you complain? Yes. It was not the smart thing to do. You know, the more I hear about Anacott, the less impressed I am with its ethics. Are they capable of staging a withdrawal from L.A. just to soften up the resistance to them? You're smart, Billy. Real smart. What are you saying, Nell? Are you saying that that's what happened? All right. It was Folger's baby. The government was coming down hard on us in Michigan. There was more than one midnight board meeting on how to handle the EPA. Folger figured as long as we had to build a new plant anyway, we might as well try to cut short the time and expense in getting permits. Cut a few corners. Anacott had nothing to lose. So Folger set it up to look like you planned to leave L.A., but that was never the plan. Your story came along, he jumped at it. It was the perfect excuse. Great. Always glad to help a friend. Well, if it wasn't your story, you would have found another reason. Suddenly, everybody is willing to deal. It worked great. And there's a lot that hasn't come out yet, such as the city and the state offering a fat tax incentive to Anacott for staying. How do you know all this? I saw it in writing. I typed the memo myself. You mean there's a memo that exists that spells the whole thing out? Yes, that's right. Oh, no, would I love to see that memo. What do you mean? Is there any way that I could get my hands on it? Well, it's in my desk, I guess, or what was my desk. If I could get a copy of that memo, it would prove manipulation. Anacott might as well turn that factory site into a parking lot for all the good it would do them, and Mr. Folger would be lucky to get a job as an attendant. This is really important, isn't it? I think it is. I have to pick up my last paycheck tomorrow anyway. I'd be right there. I could wait till the office cleared out for lunch. No, no, I can't let you do that. Okay, Billy. Damn. You know, you play fairer than they do. Continue in a moment here on A and E. Well, look who's here. It's Billy Newman. No kidding. I once knew a Billy Newman. She used to work here. In fact, you even look a lot like her. What's this? Oh, not much. Just the evidence that proves my hunch about Anacott was a hundred percent correct. This isn't bad. This isn't bad at all. Okay, I want three copies and make them yourself. One for Mrs. Pinchon, one for the lawyers, one for you to write the story. We'll keep the original. You sure about this? You want evidence? I got your evidence. What do you need? A signed confession? Okay, let's run with it. Nice work, Billy. The problem with responding to journalistic cheap shots is that you uh, tend to get down into the muck 
that the people were maligning him. But in the case of the Tribune's story, Anacott has no choice but to fight back and to set the record straight. The charges leveled in this morning's edition of the Tribune are plainly and without equivocation an out-and-out -out fraud. Lawyers from Anacott Industries are now in U.S. District Court filing suit seeking $5.3 million in damages against the Los Angeles Tribune. Now, this is not uh, a nuisance lawsuit. 5.3? Where'd they get that? 5.3. Now, on the front page of the Tribune is a copy of a memo, supposedly written by me and typed on my stationery. Now, this is a copy of my real stationery. Now, if you'll bear with me, I think I can show you the differences between the two. Are you saying the Tribune printed a forgery? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Now, you will notice that the Tribune's memo is phony in three respects. First, the company logo is smaller. The typeface is similar, but not identical. And my signature is a very good amateur's attempt at forgery. Now, Anacott will, of course, supply affidavits and uh, original negatives from the printers who contract their services with the company for further verification. The number you've reached is no longer in service, and there is no number. Who are you calling? Uh, Folger's secretary, my terrific source, just disappeared off the face of the earth. We better get back. We're on deadline. Do you think I went out and had a damn memo faked? Nobody's accusing you of that. Well, will you accuse me of it so I can deny it? We're just trying to figure out how this thing happened. I was set up, it's obvious. By whom? By Nell Wheeler, Folger's secretary. Who has since vanished. Or somebody at Anacott, or Folger, or Councilman Norton, or I, I don't know. Look, Billy, don't get sore at us for asking these questions. We really have to explore this. This guy Folger, were you close to him? Did you have a relationship? Absolutely not. What has that got to do with it? Well, there are rumors. I need to hear that there's nothing to them. Well, you heard it. So let me ask something. While you were covering Anacott, were you ever in contact with environmental groups? Wait a minute. Are you saying that I would I would try to help their campaign by by phonying up some documents against Anacott? Hey, Billy, everybody knows that you're sympathetic towards those conservation groups. Yes, I am. I am. I admit it. But I wouldn't do anything dishonest, and I wouldn't distort a story to sell that point of view. <sighs> We're just looking for something tangible. All I have is my word. And all they have is the evidence. How could this have happened? Doesn't she realize a reporter's job is to cover the news, not make it? She was aware of that. Does she realize we're facing a $5 million lawsuit? Yes, she's aware of that, too. Has she ever heard lawyers cry on the phone, Mr. Grant? What do the lawyers really think of our position? Let me put it this way. They would be much happier if they were representing the other side. Who is to blame for this? I take full responsibility. Spare me the noble gestures. I want to know how this happened. We talked about this with Billy Newman, and she assures us that she's been framed. Do we have that confirmed by any other source? No, not yet. Is it possible she knew the memo was a fake? I don't know. The whole thing doesn't sound right to me. But you cannot assure me all she did was make an innocent mistake. No. Still, we're trying like hell to find out. Well, while you're doing that, I think we have to take Ms. Newman off this story. Yes, of course, that has to be done. Well, are you sure she didn't leave a forwarding address? Well, what about a forwarding number? 
Is, is there any kind of reference on the card? Like the number of a friend or something like that. Well, are you sure? Oh, thanks anyway. This woman has covered her tracks about nine different ways. It's incredible. They think they can get away with this. I'm waiting for a call from the Department of Motor Vehicles. Billy, throw your nose together and give them to Donovan. Why? Because I'm putting someone else on the story. But it's my story. I've been on it all the way. I've got to take you off it. Oh, my God. What? Do I still work here? Yeah, yeah, of course you do. I'm just pulling you off Anacot. I want to put you on the uh, Poinsettia Festival. You've been under a lot of pressure. And I choked. I screwed up. That's what you think, isn't it? That I couldn't take the pressure? Don't be silly. I just hate myself when I get silly. Listen, Billy. What happened to you on the Anacott story could have happened to any of us. Yeah, I know. You get to wanting stories so badly sometimes. You know the guys are crooks. You're so close. All you need is that one final bit of evidence. It is a temptation we all feel. Well, thanks a lot, Rossi. I'm glad you understand the motives that I had to fake a story. Uh, Except, as a matter of fact, that isn't what happened at all. I didn't invent the evidence. I was set up. And I would appreciate it if the people that I work with would stop being so forgiving. I didn't do anything that needs forgiving. Rosie, I have something I want you to do for me. This Anacott guy, Curtis Folgers from Detroit. I want you to look into his background, see where he worked before. Anything. Lou, I'm halfway through this transit thing. Hold off on that. This has priority. Hope you have some good news for a change. Adam's back. Adam who? Oh, how soon they forget. Hey, Pasa. I miss much? Like the uh, Poinsettia Festival, maybe? You're in luck. It's next week. Next week? I thought... Relax, Billy's covering it this year. Well, that's fine with me. Six years in a row is enough. Of course, you are the expert. Oh, you cover a story once, and right away you're the expert, which means you're stuck with it for the rest of your life. I did one lousy forest fire story when I was working up in Seattle. The next four years, I was stuck with a lumber beat. Lumber's a big story in Seattle. Yeah, but trees are a tough interview. <laughs> is there any chance we might get a story out of your travels in Mexico? Well, I might have something for you, sure. Oh, it's longer than your expense account. You kidding? My expense account's a three-part series. Sorry, pal, no one's here. I know, Miss Wheeler's my girl. She asked me to look in on you guys, make sure everything's all right. You having any problems? Oh, man, this is Breeze. The girlfriend keeps a real neat apartment. You don't usually see that. Some people say that guys are bad, but let me tell you, broads are worse. Yeah, well, now has got a class act. Look, I just want to make sure you got the right address. Uh, you know where this stuff's going? Hey, come on, man. We're pros. We'll be done in an hour, and in two days, it'll all be in Detroit. You going back there, too? Oh, uh, yeah. Seems to lose a lady like that. Yeah, I'm going to see her. Uh, is she got the street right? 8405 Lardner Street. Judy Wheeler, Mrs. Judy Wheeler. Her mother, right? Right. See, we even got a telephone number and everything. Like I said, no sweat. Yeah, well, I'm gonna save myself a trip. Take it easy, guys. Sure. You too. Hey, what I'm afraid of, Louis, if we go to court at this point, we're gonna lose. I don't know. Anacott's case seems too pat for me. I just hate to see the trips a lot of court on this. Oh, well, we can settle for a lot less than their ask. I mean, they... They just use that million after the number to get our attention. Well, if Billy's right. Unfortunately, when you go to court, it isn't who's right, it's who the judge believes. Anyway, Lou, I just want this thing to end. Who did you give the story to? Rossi. I've got him checking into Folger's background. He's already dug up some good stuff. Like what? Well, it seems like he worked for Ostro Advertising in Detroit before he went to work for Anacott. So? Ostro handles the advertising for Anacon Industries. They're a pretty big, respected outfit, the way I hear. 
You never heard it in Detroit. Their specialty is getting people elected. And principals don't count nearly as much as the client's ability to pay. They're the guys you use when you're behind and you're desperate and you don't care how you win. Dirty tricks. I remember a classic whisper campaign. When Martin Decatur ran for governor. Oh, yeah. I remember Decatur looked like a shoe-in. And then he lost. A month before the election, Ostro took over the campaign against him. He had one gimmick, and it worked. A couple of guys away to lunch hour. Then they go to the top of one of the largest office buildings in Detroit. On their way down, as the elevator started to pick up people, two guys would start to talk. One of them would say, Hey, did you hear about Decatur over the weekend? I understand his wife caught him shacked up with some secretary at some lakefront motel. By the time the elevator hit the lobby, the story was going all through the building. Then the guys go across the street to another building and start the whole story all over again. Before long, the story's all over the city, and of course people believe it. But what's Decatur going to do, run around telling everyone that the rumor about him and the secretary is a lie? And that's the Ostro Advertising Company. And you think that, that Folger may have brought some of this philosophy into Anaconda? I'm not sure. I bet that missing secretary can tell us. Bossy, what'd you find out? Uh, Mrs. Wheeler? Hi, is Nell here, please? Oh, I'm sorry I missed her. Uh, this is a friend of hers from L.A. Boy, it's really great to talk to you after hearing so much about you. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you suppose you could give me her new work number? No, 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 don't, don't tell her, please. I'd rather it be a surprise. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, Thanks. Thanks, Mrs. Wheeler. <clears throat> Remember, I want to surprise her. Okay. Good. Bye. <clears throat> Where does she work? Your hometown. Detroit? Continue in a moment here on AMD. AMD returns to Lou Grant. It's 20 minutes to deadline, Billy. How are you coming on the Poinsettia Festival? Oh, I don't know. This is just a, a dumb little story, and I just can't seem to concentrate. I just. Uh... I know. Give me your notes. I can do it, Donovan. I just have to find the right lead. Give me your notes. It's all right. What'd you think of the oil story, Donovan? Mm. It was okay. Thanks. You know, there's something I can't quite figure out. Hanukkah was supposed to be moving to Mexico when the L.A. deal fell through, right? Right. Oh, the oil minister gave me a fix on all the new industry moving in, and he never mentioned it. Maybe he didn't want to take you into his confidence. They seem to be open about everything else. Hmm. Look, do me a favor, will you? Billy's tied up on something else. Uh, we got a story here that should be very good for her. Would you mind writing it from her notes? Her handwriting better than yours? I guess so. Thank you. Sure. What's it on, anyway? Poinsettias? Just give me back my poinsettias. No, no, it's all right. I'll do it. It's my story. Give me my notes. Donovan asked me to do it. We're on deadline. Then you better hurry and give it to me. Look, Billy, it's all right. It's no problem. I understand how you feel. You feel lousy. Never mind how I feel, Adam. I have felt lousy before, and I have always been able to pound this junk out. It goes with the job, doesn't it? Now just give me my notes, Adam. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. I got better places for you, dear. What bugs me is I get the feeling that these lawyers are about to roll over and I'm left without a reputation. You're talking like it's all over. I'm feeling like it's all over. And I'm not going to sit around that city room where I have nothing to write, where everybody is so damn solicitous and they treat me like I am this great embarrassment. I can't stand that. I'm getting out. Go slow on that, please. 
I made a few phone calls. Look, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just asking you to give it more time. Why? Because you're a good reporter. Because I want you working for me. Well, well. I haven't heard that very much lately. Hi. Mind if I join you? No, sit down. You get locked up okay? Yeah. No problems. I have a bit of news. I ran into one of our lawyers in the elevator. He says they're going to talk to the Anacott people tomorrow. Talk? What have they got to tell them besides see you in court? Well, they feel the paper can cut its losses considerably by settling. And what did you say to them? What should I have said? You should have said, don't settle because we weren't wrong. You know what kills me, Lou, is that this has suddenly become an issue of money and not who's right and who's wrong. Billy, that's not being fair. I'm right, and the trip is right, and Anacott's wrong, and nobody's going to find that out because I'm not getting any support. Not even from you. Well, I guess the idea of a city editor backing up his reporter has gone out of style. Well, I am glad to be back home. Maybe I'm crazy, but I think the weather is boring. They only have two seasons out there, night and day. Oops, I've got a visitor. I'll see you at lunch. Can I help you? Do you have an appointment with Mr. Harding? No, I don't, Miss Wheeler. Came to see you. Joe Rossi, Los Angeles Tribune. I want to talk to you about a mutual friend, Billy Newman. Lou Grant? Yeah. I'm Curtis Folger. What's going on? I just got a call from Joe Rossi. Asking me to make a statement about some ridiculous story that he says that you're planning to run. Well, what exactly did Mr. Rossi say to you? He says that you're planning to run some story that would uh, destroy Anacott's claims against the Tribune. Something about some evidence supplied by some former secretary of mine, Nell Wheeler. <laughs> it sounds like another unfounded attack on Anacott Industries. If you really thought that, you wouldn't be here. We have a tape-recorded interview with Nell Wheeler in the Detroit office of Ostro Advertising. Mr. Folger, we know that Anacott never intended to move from Los Angeles, but threatened to do so in order to gain concessions, and that you never opened negotiations with the Mexican government. I can't believe it. I understand that you've insisted on taking full credit for the plan with your board of directors, so Rossi and I figured you'd be the one to make a statement. Well, you get no comment from me on that story. I have no statement to make. That's up to you. We're on deadline. Hey, Mr. Grant, it's um, possible that I could be very helpful to the Tribune in persuading Anacott to consider dropping its suit. Don't go to any trouble on our account. This is a lot more important than you realize. There's a lot higher stakes involved than uh, just some newspaper article. Are you worried about the girl? Don't be. I can get her off the hook. I can, uh, I can say that it was uh, Nell Wheeler who, uh, who was responsible. Forget it. Okay. Mr. Grant, this is a drop in the bucket compared to what's really going on at Anacott. I'm just a little fish. But if you uh, lay off me on this one, I can get you 18 bigger stories to run. Well, we like to take our stories one at a time, Mr. Folger, but thanks for the offer. Well, I, I know we can work something out. I'll get back to you.
You working on anything that'll keep? Obituaries, why? I'll just hold a while longer. Bossy's working on a story and can't finish it. Take these notes. I'll have to call him in Detroit to fill in the details. I need four takes in less than half an hour. Wonderful, writing Rossi's hand-me-downs. Remember, four takes and you don't have much time. You paid one. Whatever you say. It's a story about a frame-up. I think you could do a good job with it. abused children justified in their crimes of revenge. It's a case for the courts on Law and Order tonight. Now cops find that the balance on phony credit cards equals murder on Police Story, next on A&E.